bonjour, bonjour. Oh my God, what did you eat for lunch? What did you not eat lunch yet? Are you alive? Are you sleeping? Are you woken up? What's the story? Morning glory. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is, let's get some mic here. My name, yeah, wow, merci, thank you. Um, a great welcome to you today for this very, very important session, because this session today really encapsulates a company that is generally regarded as one of the most, the 10 most important companies in the world, and particularly Tencent Music, which, believe it or not, in just one country has 700 million users, but is now spreading on a global basis. How many of you have been familiar with Tencent before you came here today? Oh good, most of you. Oh good. Oh good, you've been in. Oh good. Yes, you know Tencent. You knew them when they were only nine cents. Now they're ten. It's really growing big. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the reason that we're gathered today is we've got someone who is a real specialist in looking at the future and unrolling of streaming and streaming as it applies particularly in the continent of Africa. So here's a question for all of you. How many countries are there in Africa? 21, 29, or 54? 54 is correct. And uh, we'd like to bring onto the stage now the chief commercial officer of Tencent Music. And just so that you know, in 2001, a company in Southern Africa, by the name of Naspers, bought a 46% stake in Tencent, so that's 17 years ago, for $35 million, and that stake today is worth $180 billion. Because the company, Tencent, as a broad commercial entity, is valued at nearly $600 billion and is involved in many aspects, including games, uh, Clash of Clans, those of you that are gamers and played, it's a wonderful company. But today is not what we're talking about in that regard. What we're talking about, in essence, is streaming Tencent music. And to tell the story and to show you why this is so important, please give a medium 2018 welcome to Tabit Ali, the Chief Commercial Officer of Tencent Music. Tabit. Yeah, baby. Thanks, Ralph. All yours. You got a mic? Yes. Very good. Hello, everybody. Ralph, do you want to... Shall we, shall we sit? Do you want to... Um, oh, okay. You go for it. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you for, Madam, for, for having us here. Uh, my name is Thabit Ali. I'm from Tencent, Africa. And I head the music division. Uh, what I just wanted to share today was m maybe a little bit of a conversation about uh, what we're doing, how we're doing that, and uh, maybe some suggestions around what the opportunities are to work with us in, in Africa. I think firstly, just uh, the consumer brand for Tencent Music in, in, in Africa is Jukes. Uh, Jukes was launched about four years ago in Southeast Asia, and Africa has been the first expansion uh, outside of, of Asia. Uh, we launched about a year ago and are available on, on Apple Music and Google Play. And we really, from a focus perspective, to answer the why question, uh, believe that what's required is to be behind the music. So we don't want to be in front of it. We don't want to be the ones leading anything or trying to be bigger than the artists. We think it's about the artists, and it's about supporting the artists. And uh, I'm, I'm very glad that I, I see some familiar faces from, from across Africa uh, in the audience. So uh, I'd like to think that we, over the last year that we've been in the market, have kind of walked what we, we're going to be talking about today. So from a focus perspective, the uh, uh, music is both international. So you see that in this particular shot, we had covered the Grammys and, and, and many international artists. Like uh, every international streaming service, We've got partnerships with Warner, Sony, and, and Universal. Uh, but we've also, and, and we value this quite strongly, have built very strong relationships with local partners, um, focused on, on, in this particular case, uh, the artist is Karlin van Jaasveld, who is uh, a South African Afrikaans artist. And um, the artists featured on the right-hand side were featured in a concert called GOM in Concert. And GOM, just interestingly, was one of the um, music genres that were featured in the, the Marvel movie. So uh, 
Black Panther featured a very local, very strong South African uh, beat. What are we doing? And, and how are we looking at driving this forward? So an uh, uh, interesting thing that came up in conversation recently over the last two days was that the bulk of music consumed around the world is, is done so illegally. We all know this is a fact. But what's interesting is that in many cases, people don't actually think about the fact that it's illegal consumption. Because surely, if I can access a streaming site, or I can access a, 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 a mobile site that's got music, they must have cleared the rights. If they're running advertising, surely the artists are getting paid. So one of our key things, and in fact for us it's a cornerstone, is educating both consumers and artists on the benefits of streaming and how we can engage that and how we can help artists to build their careers and their businesses. And we've partnered, and, and these are some examples of partnering with either independent labels or major labels. This was, was Warner Music with Zandi. Uh, and, and then big international brands like uh, Red Bull and the music festival. In, in each case, we were the exclusive streaming partner. What we're also trying to do, uh, and Ralph, something that you've been actively doing over many, many years, uh, is trying to grow the market. So uh, we're not trying to fight for the small space where people are already spending more money. And we're not trying to get people to move from Spotify or Deezer or Apple to us. It's not the intention. The intention is to build a new space with a new audience, uh, an audience that's paying for music, an audience that will build the music industry and, and hopefully drive investment back. So on the left hand side, you'll see a typical ad that says, access your favorite music and make it available offline. And this is what streaming services are about, right? It's carrying your music with you, it's carrying the memory of something in your pocket and then being able to access that anyway. But what we've also done over the last while, and that's both with international and, and local artists, is try to invest in positive user behavior change. So the question is, how do we drive changes in user consumption that will tomorrow reap rewards? What, so uh, you spoke about Tencent in China. Tencent Africa is a combination of, of what's happening in China, but also of NASPARS uh, based out of, out of Africa. Uh, NASPARS, as many of you know, is the, the biggest media company across Africa and has both uh, TV as well as uh, online platforms. So a large number of Africans across the continent are accessing uh, either digital or, or broadcast TV. And what we were trying to do with, with actual insights into being on the ground, uh, firstly in South Africa and then, then as we move out across the rest of Africa, is taking some of the brands that exist that are already household names and integrating that into our service. Uh, what we've also looked at is how we integrate contextual advertising and engagement uh, and how we drive that from an advertising perspective uh, into opportunities that, that artists can leverage. Very importantly in, in moving forward, just part of the conversation, and we can chat about this in, in, in more detail. Uh, in the first one, these are some examples of partnership opportunities that we've, we've driven already and, and maybe there's some others that come out of this room or, or out of partners of, of people in this room. But the first one is about changing that user behavior, and it's about incentivizing positive behavior. This was an incentive campaign to give away data and make music more accessible by removing the idea of the cost of the actual data. In, in Africa, this is still a, a big issue. Uh, the other one was a campaign with Euphonic, a South African artist. That, uh, his album was available exclusively to us and was launched on our platform before it, before it rolled out. Uh, Partnerships are a big thing for us. That was a partnership with Sony and it was around an event for Camila Cabello, the, the American-based artist. And earlier we spoke about a Gomin concert. That was a focus on a particular niche that was grown. It was a new sound that's been around for about a year or so uh, and, and has become something that's become an African export into the US. Um, and that's us. Simple, straightforward, to the point. Thank you. OK. So Talbot, let's just uh, have a look at getting some uh, facts on this. You're based in Africa. Your headquarters are essentially in Cape Town. But you are looking at the entire African continent, obviously some leading markets and leading territories in that, uh, in that part of the world. 
Uh, traditionally, what has happened certainly over the last 10 or 15 years as the telcos have been growing um, so fast, they're purported to be about 900 million mobile subscribers in Africa. Would I be correct in assuming that today's consumers, particularly uh, the, essentially the young audience, because your target audience tends to be under the age of 30, correct, for streaming? Yes. Okay, so uh, they would be much more inclined to access their streaming services on mobile rather necessarily than online, because in Africa, online penetration is not as comprehensive as it might be in other parts, say North America or in uh, certain parts of Europe or the UK. So effectively, this is a mobile play where streaming is mobile. Give us your sense of that. So, Ralph, you've, you've touched on three important points. Right. Uh, the one is the operator dominance across Africa. Right. Uh, as we sit here today, probably all of us have credit cards. But across Africa, that's not always the reality. There's many territories in which people don't have credit cards, or very few people have credit cards. Or people have credit cards, but they won't use them online. So the digital consumption patterns look a little different across Africa um, from a financial inclusion perspective, the first one. Uh, the second one is that streaming services tend to be something accessed by a younger audience on a mobile phone that's capable of streaming and with someone that's able to use data and is comfortable to use data. The picture across South Africa is that more than 50% of mobile phones are smartphones. That's a high percentage. It's quite a high percentage, especially for Africa. The general number across Africa is just north of 20%. So there's a high penetration of, of, of cell phones across Africa, but the smartphone penetration is still quite low. Now this presents immediately a unique opportunity for people that are on the ground and, and getting uh, business to consumers. But the technologies that have leapfrogged lots of other places in the world. So the US, an amazing place for content consumption, was analog first. In, in Africa, it's not just not PC-based and mobile first, in some cases, it's mobile only. And we've certainly created a big focus around driving exactly that. So looking at the different countries in Africa that you're operating at the moment, if you had to choose, say, five key markets other than South Africa, which countries do you see as being your kind of uh, growth highways for where you're going forward? One obviously thinks of Nigeria, uh, over 200 million people, but give us some sense of, of how you do it, because Africa is a big continent. So N Nigeria would be the next natural place to branch out. Uh, it's got good infrastructure, it's got high content consumption, whether that content consumption uh, at the moment is legal or illegal notwithstanding. Uh, it's an environment that's got great music, great artists, uh, and it's a, got a thriving economy with people keen to drive innovation. Kenya, similar environment. Uh, in fact, uh, the Silicon Savannah, there's been a lot of investment from the US and Europe into East Africa. Uh, Ghana, Tanzania, uh, Rwanda has become an interesting space to look at as well. Uh, but the, the two or three key ones would probably be Nigeria, Ghana, and Kenya. So Tanzania are actually here at Medem for the very first time ever, and a number of other African countries coming here to Medem for the first time, which is all a signal showing that there's much greater interest in this kind of thing. But from a streaming point of view, obviously Spotify are the global leaders, and Tencent recently acquired 10% of Spotify, and Spotify acquired a 10% interest in Tencent Music. Is that correct? That's correct. That is correct. So. That means that you could have a bird's eye view of some of the key technologies that are utilized within that framework. And so your team that looks at developing Africa-specific technology that can drive streaming business, and bearing in mind one of the big problems in Africa, or opportunities really one might say, is that not all music fits all. Now Drake might be very popular all across Africa, but if someone comes from Nigeria, or someone comes from Kenya, or someone comes from Senegal, that doesn't necessarily mean to say that they would like music that comes from South Africa. Or is that the case? So, so that's a really, really good point. So firstly, the investment in Spotify is driven out of Tencent China specifically. Uh, Tencent Africa is a, a different division. Uh, 
the learnings I think from having international partners in the local market, South Africa very, very specifically, has been around how Apple's been successful. Apple's been in South Africa for the last 10 years with iTunes and the last four years with Apple Music. And they've done amazingly well, they really have. Uh, but really focused on the top end of the market. Deezer's tried to broaden that audience and, and has achieved quite a, quite a bit of that move. And Spotify, having entered South Africa recently with a view to probably going across Africa, uh, now three months in, has done quite a bit to drive the idea of streaming. We, we like the fact that there's multiple partners in the market. Because everyone's spending money, everyone's investing in, in building artists, everyone's investing in trying to change the narrative of music consumption from an illegal consumption service to, to legal music. Right. Uh, the, the thing around, I think, having people on the ground, we've got quite a large team of curators that physically are from the music space and sit and curate playlists. So we really have an ear to the ground. But we've also started implementing AI in our playlists. Mm -hmm. So users get served um, playlists and new songs based on their particular tastes. Ultimately, the, the point is to get to a demographic of one. So being able to understand exactly who you are, what you listen to, and, and being able to serve music to you specifically. So Spotify had, have been having huge success with their Discover Weekly initiative, which gives you a whole new uh, playlist at the beginning of each week, 48 million users now with Spotify. How does Tencent Music work in terms of its streaming service? Like, What do you charge for the streaming service in your primary market? So we've got both, a, uh, and exactly the same as, as most other international services, a free tier, and the intention with a free tier is to have uh, users consume um, premium services, no advertising, uh, having an experience that's positive, and then drive from there to either an ad-funded service or to the premium paid service. And so uh, when you're looking at curating the material that you're going to be adding into the Tencent Music Africa uh, component, you'd mentioned the movie Black Panther, and obviously the Khom uh, music style, which uh, was used in that movie. The movie such a groundbreaker. Uh, Ryan Coogler, the director, was amazed that the reaction would have been so strong in Africa. But of course, it's been a real game changer as a movie that reinforced the importance of African music probably uh, more pertinently than anything has done in the last 15 years. Um, when you do your analysis in terms of musical styles, what are you finding is hip hop a, a primary um, uh, style that uh, is popular on uh, Tencent Music Africa? Give us some sense from a repertoire point of view what works. So, Jukes has certainly seen uh, urban music as an overarching category being hugely successful. Uh, in some of the, the music that's hyper localized, we've seen an evolution in bigger consumption around gospel, which we knew was a natural, a natural evolution. And then Afrikaans music in South Africa, so hyper-localized uh, linguistic groups accessing music specific to them. So what you're finding is that you can go to those core uh, followings, whether it's uh, particular brands of music or musical styles, and yet there's also a great appeal for the big international artists. So for example, someone like Rihanna or someone like Drake or would Lil Wayne or some of the important hip-hop and rap Acts from America also feature in that? Uh, Ralph, you've certainly got an interesting taste in, in music. <laughs> well, I didn't peg you for a Little Wayne fan, no, but you do. Wayne, sure, no, I'm getting my tattoos done straight after this session. <laughs> I hope it's going to be a Jukes tattoo. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so to give us some sense, uh, you have access now to all of the repertoire from the major labels. You're dealing with the local labels, and now your big task as you move forward in the rest of Africa is what? So we've got two responsibilities. And, and um, you know, as we sit in this room today with, with people who drive music uh, as an industry, thought yeah. leaders, we have a responsibility, one, to drive economic motives. But two, and, and, and it's something I heard recently, was that instead of just studying STEM at school, uh -huh. STEM should maybe be the thing that we're looking at our kids studying so that 
the arts are something that's considered. So the responsibility that we have, Ralph, is to also drive what the new evolutions are and the changes are that need to happen in, in, in the music. Yes, AI is the future, and we, we all understand that. But I don't think that as we sit here right now, AI systems are going to dictate what those new evolutions are. That's still going to be driven by people. So Tencent in China is a huge, probably one of the world's leading uh, investors and uh, participants in video games and video gaming. Do you see in the future of where Tencent Music is going that you'll incorporate perhaps gaming that's got an African context to it as part of streaming so that you'd be streaming and you guys would be kind of like Twitch in a way? So generally when I get asked questions that I'm uh, uh, not really focused on, on answering, I say okay. that's, a, that's a really good question. Uh -huh. the, the answer is probably yes. Uh -huh. And uh, looking at some of the investments Tencent's made globally, it, it's a natural evolution for us, uh, but not on our immediate roadmap. So when you mentioned uh, telcos and the importance of basically having mobile streaming as really the de facto way that people in Africa, or certainly in your markets, do it, you maintain good relationships with each of the telcos, with the uh, handset manufacturers, with the infrastructure providers. How does that work in terms of your day-to-day -day operation as a streaming business? So the operators have a massive monopoly, and I guess I'm just going to say that straight. Uh, across Africa, because of the, the billing issues, not having credit cards and not having direct billing options, uh, those monopolies exist. We are very close with the operators and, and will continue to partner with operators, but also in tandem provide alternate payment solutions. So uh, WeChat, the, the chat platform, WeChat. has also got content integrated into the chat platform. Right. And um, we've had WeChat Wallet. China's been very successful with WeChat Pay. In fact, I flew into London before this. I was sitting in Harrods having lunch. And it was interesting to see that WeChat Pay was an option at the toll. So uh, digital payments have become pervasive. Um, moving around, you can click your, your cell phone in many cases, and you can pay using that. And we've certainly, in, in uh, Africa, rolled out payment options. The telcos remain the easiest and best way to, to engage the consumer, though, from a payment perspective. So you would have relationships with each of the telcos in each of the markets that you're in, because clearly that's the way that you're going to get to your consumer base fastest, directly, without any other kind of uh, uh, platform competition. Mobile is the route that one has to go in Africa. Mobile is definitely the route, and the partnership with the telcos is around billing. Um, with, billing, of course. with some telcos in the audience, uh, it's always good when they look at reducing their prices and driving that forward. We're open to that. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've, we've just barely scratched the surface, but what is interesting about Tencent Music is this. Tencent, as a company, in terms of their incredible technology, their back-end, their platforms that they have, both in China and also internationally, means serious business in Africa. I mean, here's a company, Tencent, that owns 10% of Snapchat. They've got uh, interest in Spotify, so they really know where all the bodies are buried in terms of trying to come up with something great. So, Tabit, fantastic to have you here. Great to have Tencent Music Africa. And you together with uh, Brett Lobser, who's here with you. Where's Brett? Is Brett in the audience today? That gentleman there with the red shirt, a fantastic guy from Tencent Music. It's worth you buttonholing both Tabit and Brett to speak about Tencent Music Africa because they, these guys really do know it. So please give Tabit a big round of applause. Tabit. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, everybody.